next two videos, we're going to go over an assortment of quick and dirty tricks that you can use to speed up your workflow whenever you're working in the retopology room of 3D Code. The first thing we want to look at is resolving snapping issues. Now, typically you'll want to re-snap an object anytime you make changes either to the retopo mesh or the high poly mesh that you may be working on in the voxel room. One good thing to note here is that if you need to make large scale edits to your voxel object, 3D Coat gives you the option to conform that retopo mesh as you're making changes. So if you use the move tool, the transform tool, or the pose tool, you have this option here to conform retopo mesh. And as the name implies, 3D Coat will try to keep that retopo mesh conformed to the underlying voxel object when you make these large scale edits. It's very important to remember these are the only three tools that this option works with. So if you need to make just standard sculpting edits with brushes and whatnot, then you'll need to come over to the Retopo room periodically and tweak or finesse the localized areas where you made those changes in the voxel room. If this option were turned on for brushes, then it could cause a pretty significant drop in performance. So that's the reason why it only works with these tools that makes large-scale edits in this particular workspace. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in here. And as I mentioned, if you make some changes to either the voxel object or the read topology mesh, then you can do a global snap where it will snap the entire object here. You have some options, snap to outer surface, snap to closest along normal, and snap to nearest but in this case snapped outer might be the best choice so I'll just click snap and you can see depending on how dramatic the changes are between the two that you might have some explosions or snapping errors in certain areas and it's usually caused by areas of the retopo mesh that are not so much outside the voxel object that's actually easier for it to calculate but it's when it penetrates through the voxel object, that's when you'll typically see these types of issues. Okay, so I'll undo by hitting the Control Z keyboard combination. So let's try it by working in a localized fashion. This typically is a good first step to try to remedy this problem. So even with Auto Snap turned on, I can increase my brush size. And in some areas, where the difference is not so dramatic. Let's reduce the opacity amount. You can see there is a little bit of a difference here between the gap in the box logic and the retopo mesh. So what I typically will do is I will hover right down the center of where I want to actually push these vertices of the retopo mesh. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and that typically will draw the geometry toward the center of your cursor. You may also want to take note that when you hold the shift key and drag up and down, you can increase or decrease the level of smoothing. And sometimes you want to work in a more subtle fashion, so you can just reduce the smoothing amount. Okay, so again, I'm just going to brush right down the center of where I want it to snap and so it's going to snap and smooth at the same time. Same thing goes if you actually just move the geometry it's going to snap as soon as you let up from your cursor. Okay. So that's easy enough and you can also just simply tap an area and 3D Cut will snap. So let me find another area here So you can see the mesh is, instead of penetrating through the voxel object, it's actually sitting a good deal outside the voxel object, so I can just tap it. That works pretty well without any fuss. So this is always a good option. You can just go along and just tap. I find, though, that 
sometimes tapping it might move it a little bit so another good option is hold the shift key to smooth but in this case right click and drag all the way down to where you have no smoothing value whatsoever it will just snap and that's it okay so that really eliminates any possibility of 3d coat nudging or moving your your mesh while you're tapping it okay so let's try it again here so I can just brush and that's all it's doing is it's just snapping nothing else So let's go back to this problematic area here in the front. So let me zoom in here. And what I'll do is I'll hold the shift key and crank my smoothing value up. And when I tap in this area, you can see yeah, it's really troublesome. So I'll undo. The next step you might want to take when you're having an extreme amount of trouble with the snapping is turn auto snap off. And now let's try the shift key again. I'm going to crank the value all the way up and just tap right here in the very center and just keep tapping or I can just keep brushing. Okay. Let's turn auto snap back on. I'll do the same thing. I'm going to right click and drag all the way down to where I'm just snapping and that's it. Okay, so we're pretty close here. I'm going to bring my smoothing value up to about midway and even with auto snap on it's not that big of an issue I'm now going to show a different technique and that will help us transition to the next topic which is making selections let's go to the select tool I'm going to reduce my brush size I want to point out that when you choose a select tool you're automatically in the auto mode by default until you click on a particular sub element okay so you'll notice if your brush cursor is large enough that it spans over multiple sub elements you won't be able to make a polygon selection you need to reduce it enough to where it's not extending across different sub elements okay so now I'm click on it and now it switches me to that particular mode. Once I hit the escape key to drop out of that selection, it moves me right back into auto mode. So I'll click on the vertice. And when I switch to another sub element here, you'll notice how it expanded in that selection. Let's see if this will work going from edges to faces. Indeed it does. So let's try going to vertices. The faces aha uh -huh. so going back and forth will just grow your selection let's go ahead and move on now and with that selected you'll notice here in the command section we don't have a relax button here but you do have the option when you switch to vertice mode and you want to relax keep going till I know all those vertices are no longer penetrating through the box logic and I want to draw a distinction between dropping a selection when you're in select mode and dropping a selection when you're in UV mode when you're in the select tool just hitting the escape key will drop that selection okay but if you're in UV mode I say you select an island like this, hitting the escape key will not drop that selection. You need to hold down the control key and click on the island or the universal deselect keyboard combination and that is control D. It's the very same keyboard combination that you have in Photoshop for deselecting. So keep that in mind. Alright, so let's go back to the select tool here. I think we're Pretty much done here let me go to the brush tool instead and I'll turn auto snapping back on hold the shift key because I want to smooth just a little bit while I tap right in the center 
So there are a few areas that were still a little bit problematic, so we'll turn auto snap off. Okay. Another way that you can smooth in a more precise mode, let's say this area here, what if I wanted to straighten that out to where it's completely vertical all the way across? I can select that vertice, but if I get my hotkey for edge loop, I don't want the selection quite this far. And so to deselect this, I would have to go through a few extra steps let me hit escape. So what mode do you have in this select tool to make a specific selection from here to here? Well, obviously you can just click one by one, but that's kind of tedious and laborious. Anytime you want to make a special selection along a given row of edges, use the select path tool. You select your initial point, and you can either click the nearest vertice and just drag it, And then hit enter key. I'll hit escape or point to point. Or you can just click the first point and the last point and let 3D code try to decide which is the most direct path between the two. And just hit enter. And so, just as you might in your standard 3D application, now if you use the transform tool, I can make it fit in a more localized fashion by going to main axis. Now I can just scale it to make it perfectly vertical. The escape key, and I'm done. Okay, so in select path, what I'll do is I'll hit the control D keyboard combination to deselect. Let's go back to the select tool here. And so if you want to quickly select the entire mesh on the layer, you can just double click and 3D Coat will select all the contiguous faces that are joined to that polygon. Okay. So that's one quick way to select everything. So I'll hit the escape key, drop that. But if you're in UV mode, it works a little bit different. If you want to select all the faces on the island, Okay, if I double click the same way I did previously, instead of everything on that layer, it selects everything that's on the island. And this can be very handy if you've got a lot of different islands or, or clusters on your UV map. Okay, so I'll hit Control D to deselect. Or I could just hold the Control key again and just tap that UV island. 